Hi, um, my name is Kirthana Dennis Akron. I go to Northville High School in the United States of America, and I'm an upcoming junior. And I'm doing an online interview today with Dr. Ruchic, who is from West Med Clinical School at the University of Sydney, Australia. Thank you very much. I'm Professor Steve Ruchic. I'm uh, a professor of neurology at the uh, University of Sydney and the West Med Clinical School. Um, in uh, Western Mid in Sydney, which is in the western part of uh, of the great great city of Sydney. All right. Um, so my first question, Dr. Ruchich, was what is the most significant observation that you made during the study? Well, the most significant observation was that the uh, individual cortical uh, network, interneuronal network structure, uh, influences the parameters that, that we measure. Uh, which reflect the degree of inhibition uh, and facilitation within the human motor uh, cortex. Uh, and it goes a long way in explaining why there is a variability from person to uh, person uh, in these parameters. Albeit the variability is uh, moderate, uh, this gives us a very good explanation as to why some people have high levels of inhibition, whilst others have a lower level of inhibition. Uh, from a clinical perspective, this will help us formulate experiments that could uh, address and uh, that could help us interrogate um, disease uh, uh, pathogenesis uh, much better. Um, my second question was, how does this study relate to your other studies that you perform? Well, uh, we have uh, got a long history of assessing uh, human uh, brain function in healthy controls, but also in a variety of diseases, particularly amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease. And uh, one of the uh, themes that we've come up with and, uh, and have discovered is that there is a, a cortical hyperexcitability in the brains of patients with, with ALS. Uh, and this is thought to be related to degeneration of uh, these interneuronal networks that are normally responsible uh, for these processes. Uh, there are obviously millions and millions of these uh, cortical uh, processes. And so what this as a paper, or what these findings enable us to do is to set up a construct whereby we interrogate each of these uh, individual processes. Now in this uh, experiment, we found that different interneuronal processes were responsible for different parameters. That is, a group of interneurons were responsible for short influential cortical inhibition, which is a biomarker of inhibition, whereas a separate group of um, interneuronal processes were responsible for intracortical facilitation. And so by uh, assessing these in patients with ALS or other um, neurodegenerative diseases, we will be able to tease out at what point specific uh, uh, nerves start to die and at what rates uh, they die, which will have quite significant implications of developing diagnostic tests and also developing uh, treatment strategies. Mm -hmm. um, my next question was, um, was there ever a moment where you felt like giving up when you were performing this study? And if there was, can you please describe how you overcame this? Well, um, you know, I mean, I guess there's always points where you sort of uh, think of giving up, uh, but uh, you never do. Um, obviously, one of the things that inspires us is uh, to develop a treatment for what is one of the most fatal of all human diseases, that is ALS. And if a person is diagnosed with ALS, they have 100% mortality uh, within a period of, a very short period of time. Uh, and uh, they will be also uh, disabled in even a shorter period of time. So that kind of inspires us to keep going and to, to continue with uh, the research. What we don't have in the 21st century, we don't have, have any good treatments for this devastating disease. And so the more research we can do, um, the better it is. Uh, and um, the more likely we're going to find a an effective therapy uh, for this uh, disorder. Right. Um, my next question, Dr. Ruchich, was, was there ever a situation where you had to think outside of the box? And if so, when? 
Well, I think every time you do an experiment, you, you approach it with a hypothesis, but you have to keep uh, your mind open. And you have to really uh, understand that uh, what you're finding is what is uh, real, obviously. You've got to make sure that uh, you're doing things technically well. So in this, exper in, 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 in this paper, I guess the kind of thing that surprised us were the results that we were getting. Um, the traditional view is that a specific set of neurons mediates um, uh, specific parameters. And uh, we were surprised by some of the results in that, uh, you know, th that was true for some of the uh, healthy controls, but certainly uh, not all of them. And that has uh, forced us to rethink how we approach patients uh, with um, various neurological diseases um, and to make sure that we design uh, experiments to address the findings that we found uh, uh, in our studies. For example, we know that um, some people, that, that depending on the structure of your interneuronal networks, that will influence the results that you get. So whilst we might find that, uh, say, in the past, that the, the value was, say, at the lower limit of normal, and we thought, well, that's abnormal. Uh, um, at, in hindsight, we probably, perhaps, using, these, uh, using this data, um, uh, that may not be the case. So we have to match healthy controls with disease patients based on their brain structure rather than just using it blindly and recruiting on the first, in the first um, basis. I guess this allows us uh, to refine our future studies in disease patients and match the disease patients with adequate controls. And that's what we've been doing over the last uh, 12 months. Um, my next question was, what is your favorite aspect of your research? My favorite aspect is uh, the notion of discovering new things, moving the frontiers of science, um, which is very uh, exciting, uh, which, uh, which in turn you know, leads to changes in uh, the way we understand, the, the, our understanding of the way that the brain works. But from a, a patient-directed uh, perspective, I think it's uh, providing hope for patients because this research uh, gives patients hope that we will uncover uh, new mechanisms by which disease occurs and thereby discover new ways to treat the, uh, or discover ways to treat the disease. Um, we also discover ways to measure uh, disability and, and dysfunction, which is very important going forward to test the, the efficacy of drugs and uh, other treatment uh, um, uh, endeavors that we uh, uh, implement. Great. Um, finally, is there anything that you'd like to say to your viewers who are watching this? Well, first of all, I'd like to uh, give my regards to everybody and to uh, uh, wish everybody a very safe summer and winter, depending on where they are. Um, but um, for the younger viewers, I would thoroughly encourage them to enter into neuroscience because this is the undiscovered and the new frontier. It is a, a, a very important part of medicine uh, that um, is a bounded opportunity uh, for research, innovation, uh, and uh, development. Uh, and uh, for my peers, I would like to uh, wish them all the very best uh, and to keep working, keep discovering, so that we can uh, develop a cure for these uh, dreadful neurodegenerative diseases that I've uh, chosen to be involved with. And do you want to be a neurologist, Kefana, a neuroscientist? Yeah, hopefully a neurosurgeon, yeah. Neurosurgeon. Well, hopefully we can sway you away from neurosurgery into neurology and <laughs> to be a neurology researcher. Um, I, you know, I'm a vehement advocate uh, for people doing neurology, and in particular uh, academic neurology and research. Uh, I mean, I spent a couple of years at Mass General, um, uh, mm -hmm. at the turn of the century, at between 2002 and 2004. And I was very impressed with the doctors that were there. And, uh, um, but I felt that the art of, uh, of uh, research was sort of come, going, going out of the, the sort of physiological uh, research. I think that's the way that the brain works within a human brain is the way to understanding that I think is critical for understanding human disease.
it's one thing to address them in a petri dish or to look at a, uh, a, a sequence of a genome or, you know, or an RNA, but it's a whole different thing to study the human organ whilst it's alive. And I think this is what's needed. I would, I would encourage you to think about doing cutting edge neurophysiology and you know, neuroradiology research because that will tell you how a brain works, how it responds to external stimuli, to behavioral things. And it, it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful area to be involved in. So have a think of that. You've got a long way to go, but you're on, a, on the right track and you're in a great country to achieve, you know, achieve your dreams and keep going. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'll definitely consider it. <laughs> yeah, and you're welcome to come and do a PhD with us down under once we're COVID free. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs>